Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take global stories, making headlines in our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers this morning is Chris Kende Wandu. He's a member of the Chartered Institution of Arbitrators in the UK. He's joining us here in Lagos State. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, my people, my people. Good morning. Good morning to you. <laughs> Glad to have you. Glad to have you as always. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll be starting mm -hmm. with The Guardian this morning. And The Guardian leads with over 30,000 jobs lost to closure of manufacturing firms in four years. So we've seen a lot of manufacturing firms leaving Nigeria. And of course, when they leave, there are people behind who cannot jackpa with them. So there are, there's a loss of jobs in Nigeria. But if we're looking at 30,000, that's like 30,000 people um, losing their jobs, 30,000 families that probably do not have this revenue, this source of revenue anymore. I would like to get your take on this and what you think the government should be doing right now, especially when it comes to saying we want to um, help our economy to be better. Yes, um, 30,000, those are the ones that I accounted for. Those that are not, I can tell you that we have uh, more than that. Uh, those that were not able to, that were not captured uh, because especially within the informal sector, um, probably this is more of the informal sector. The informal sector, uh, so many people have had their businesses uh, closed down, and um, as you rightly say, some have left the country, some have practically have nothing to do. Um, I will, first and foremost, we have to ask ourselves how do we get here and what was the reason and what were the reasons. For me, the reasons were the policies of the government, which this current government uh, instituted when President took over office in 2023, May 29, 2023. And on the day of his taking over, the first thing he announced was the removal of petroleum subsidy. That in itself is what has led us to where we are. And that problem has remained on the top since, since then, despite all these so called palliatives being put in place by the government. And you can see that uh, some people are already gearing up for a mass protest from the August um, uh, August 1st or thereabouts. That is part of the problem. I will say the term that I probably, I said it during that period, that a government that has just newly been sworn in would have taken his time to study the situation on ground before making such far-reaching policy statements. But it was that it's obvious that it was not thought out. That's why they said that they said that they, they, they removed the petroleum subsidy. Uh, you come to realize that from the stories we are reading, uh, from information from which the government has not even mm -hmm. billions and billions of naira have been used to stabilize the prices of petroleum products across board, and that in itself is not so. That removal of petrol subsidies led to several organizations uh, closing down because when you look at the price of diesel, um, how many of them can be able to power their diesel to be able to run their batteries? You look at the electricity tariff, which the government unilaterally again through the regulatory agencies also increased by almost 300 percent. Most of them cannot be able to. Um, they, they pay that, I'm uh, talking of the manufacturers, because we must have a comparative advantage over at times imported. Uh, then you look at other, other sectors in the economy. So that in this, uh, of course, no production company, no organization will continue to produce or continue to sustain uh, workers when it's not making profit. Mm -hmm. Even if it's, even if it's, it cannot make profit, let it even break through. And that is why um, we are having this mass um, uh, sack, as it were, of people losing their jobs. And they said the government do the right thing, then we are just wasting our time. Look at the so called palliative, the latest one, where they say 720, uh, what's it now? 720, is it, I don't even like, I've lost even count, I can't remember. Now. How many trailers they say they are moving to various states? As of this morning, this coming is that over 21 states out of 36. So they have not received a single trailer or whatever. And when you talk about 20 trailer per, per local government, that two, that's one trailer. In fact, that 20 trailer, if you do it in my own personal local government, I'm sure that the people probably cannot receive a bag. Mm -hmm. When you put that and say you are distributing it among local government, you saw this, this, what is going on on social media. Where yeah, it was about 48,000 uh, metric tons or something mm -hmm. like that, because I think it's about 1,200 yeah. for each state. Where some community, 
a community is receiving 20, uh, 25 kg of back. Community, I didn't say family, community. <laughs> so maybe they are just receiving half, half cup. And you just say that this is a waste of resources. This is a waste of time. We've said time, say time and time again. All this money can be plugged into something much uh, uh, this that Nigerians can benefit. If we plug this into agriculture, this so called money that they are wasting. I say that. Let the, the local government of my brother sitting down there is one of the food baskets in this country. Yeah. If you yeah. plot that money, some of that money, into rice production in his local government, where it comes from, which is noted for production of rice, yeah. and you push money to that state, that particular community can probably feed the whole of that state and even the South South as it were. But we are wasting time. What we are just doing is just dashing our money, and at the end of it, all, what your brother said that. You are running up, you are just thinking lakpa lakpa when you know that you have a headache. If you know what lakpa lakpa is, <laughs> lakpa lakpa means that dog. Yeah. And it's a fact. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I just let, let's go to uh, the Punch newspaper uh, where we also have, uh, because you mentioned um, subsidy removal. Fuel crisis, marketers project 700 billion naira monthly subsidy. The writers are saying NNPC mom as uh, dealers insist government still paying subsidy, reps probe crude shortage. Dangote eyes foreign markets for refinery products. Federal government meets Kiari Dangote over dispute. It worries me, apart from the fact that uh, they say uh, subsidy is still going on, if Dangote is eyeing um, other countries to sell the products that he will refine because he's having problems in Nigeria, mm -hmm. then it's a problem for us. But I, I don't know. Fuel subsidy, if it is still being paid, and how they are paying it, and why they are paying it, and I don't even know how to ask the questions or how to answer. But what do you think? The dealers are very sure that subsidy is still going on. The government is denying. What do you think? You know, I, I said it in my opening remark. I said it that <laughs> subsidy is being, being paid. Erufai said it, um, Sanusi said it, and some others within government uh, that were in and out of government um, also said it. And the economists have been saying that, that the government is keeping money. That you ask yourself that this is probably one of the de most deceitful um, uh, governments, uh, quote and unquote, as it's real. Because what stopped you from coming out to tell Nigeria that, yes, this subsidy, yes. Because if you look at the market forces, there is no way the prices of petroleum can re could have remained the same thing since last year. If you know what is going on within the international market, of course, there have been fluctuations within the system. It has been rising. So if you peg it at a particular price, then if it rises at the international market and you are importing, definitely you must pay the difference. And that is where the subsidy, we're talking about subsidy. Then you ask yourself, why did you remove the subsidy, so-called subsidy in the first instance? If you are paying as much as 700 that if they hadn't done what they did last year, we wouldn't have been where we are today. We wouldn't have been where we are today. 700 billion on a monthly basis, calculate that what it comes to in a year. That's, about, that's, that's probably going to almost 2 trillion. So what are we talking about? So uh, talking about Dangote, Dangote, we have seen that issues that Dangote have been having, we're having with the regulatory agency uh, and agencies of government. And where the um, uh, uh, whatever the MD of the regulatory agents have been telling all sorts of things, speaking from all sorts of from both sides of this man, I go to this room, uh, this room, uh, he has uh, so much uh, sulfur, it's not this, it's not that, they are not being issued license, they are not. Uh, these are the same capital that have made it possible for our, our refineries to work. Why? Because they are making so much money from those imported products. That is it. So any attempt for us to be able to have refineries working in Nigeria, they will not. I'm not saying the regulatory agencies should not regulate. It's their job. But yes, definitely it is their job. But when you are regulating, when you are coming out with such insinuation and not be able to address the issues being raised by Dango, it becomes a problem. All the refineries in Nigeria, like the one that owned by MNPC, that have been paid, uh, paid so much, trillions and trillions of naira and even billions of dollars every year to turn around. Not a single thing have we able to turn around. Since last day, they've been telling us that, oh, um, uh, Portugal refinery will come on stream on, in December. They shifted that, put, they moved it to March. From March, they say it's June. From now, they say it's August. We don't even know when that is going to come up. Those are the, and that is where I think, and I've been saying time with that number, that the Minister of Petroleum um, Resources, who is the president, 
should come out clean and tell Nigerians what is happening. Cambodia has even got to the point and said, okay, I'm not even interested in it. Can you come and buy me or let me just collect my money? Two days ago, he said that some of his friends who want him not to invest in oil and the petroleum sector in Nigeria are, are laughing at him now because they say they didn't retire. him. The Angote cannot get crude oil to be able to refine his product. He has to depend on good, um, going to Brazil to import, going to America to import crude, crude oil. Then something is very, very fundamental. And that is the same thing. There are two critical sectors in the economy of the country. One is the petro uh, petroleum um, 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 oil sector. The second one is the energy sector. And that is the same people that have monopolized uh, um, power that today a country like Nigeria that over 60 years is still moving around 4,000 to 5,000 megawatts of uh, power. When countries like South Africa are doing close to about 80,000, 100,000 with lesser population, there is a cabal within it. I remember when there used to be a minister, a minister of power, who said that he, he, he was former um, vice chancellor of UN. And at one point, he said that, I think he said that he was a wizard or witches or whatever. You know, I can't remember the exact word. That is the problem. Any government that is interested to move the economy forward should be able to look at these two critical things. But the question you ask yourself there is no country that does not give subsidy to its citizens. No country, name them. No. In the area of agriculture, power, or even um, um, petroleum, uh, petroleum sector, they do that. Germany, US, and the rest of the because they know that the citizens, the citizens must have something to gain. It, it reminds me, Chris, it reminds me of uh, the former governor of Cross River State. He was Minister of Power at one point. And when they were saying they were going to probe him, uh, that's Lili Moke, he said the IPP um, issue, the independent. Uh, is it independent power plant? Independent power. Power. Yes, independent power. that it was designed. It was designed to fail. And if anybody True. has a contrary uh, opinion, opinion, he should he should tell him. Till today, nobody said anything. He said he was minister of power, but that thing was designed to fail. So nobody can can say anything otherwise. Until date, nobody said anything otherwise. But maybe yes. Let, let me just, let, just let me just land on that. You remember the Lumenu power probe? Yes. The billions and billions of men that was saying that was not gone. Have you heard anything about that problem again? Mm. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. And that's why I tell you that Kabali in every of these sectors and they know what they are doing. Well, there's another story here that says global banks mm. to inject um, $7.5 billion into Nigeria power sector. Um, I don't know if we're going to see a significant impact since we're talking about the power sector. Are we going to see a significant, a significant impact on this? Because if I'm going to speak from a personal point of view, I've been recently moved to Band A, and I don't even see the... Congratulations and accept it's, my sympathy at the same it time. It is the sympathy <laughs> I'll be accepting. I don't even see the 20 hours of power. Last week, Wednesday, I had no power for almost 24 hours. So I'm wondering why I'm paying such a high tariff and then I'm not getting the power that you've told me I'm going to get. But I don't know if this $7.5 billion that the global banks are going to be injecting, I think maybe the African Development Bank is one of that. I don't know if we're going to see a significant impact in our power sector. I doubt it. I'm, so, I'm, I'm very pessimistic. Mm. If we continue on this trajectory, then nothing going to happen. Sincerely, I will tell you that we've received more than that in the past. And you ask yourself, what was it used for? And that is the basic fact. The fact remains that I say there are some people who did the collect of power within the various agencies of government. And even the connivers with certain individuals who don't want this thing to work. And they continue to siphon this money on a daily basis. Corruption is very endemic and it's within our genes. Some people are just born to be corrupt and continue to siphon. And did you just say it's in our genes? <laughs> did you just no, say that? It's not in mine. <laughs> yes. Ah, my sister, it's not our own gene, no, because it's that kind of money and they talk as they talk. But well, it's not for people like us. Those that get those that are not people like you and I. Mm. It's just like what is happening. We are talking about the oil sector and you're talking about oil tent. Would it yeah. be Nigeria Delta and some country there? Is, is it Napo Manitif or oil? You, you know, if you see a, a pipeline, a, a petroleum or oil pipeline, you could know it. Even. No. These are organized systems. Yes, that, that's why the fact that when you pay some individuals, Billions and billions of naira, um, uh, naira and dollars to secure most of those pipes. You see that those pipes are still being vandalized and being carried. Till to, to today, we cannot meet our OPEC um, uh, quota. And, and that is very personal. We are coming between around maybe one, 100, uh, 1 million for 
when we are looking at, we are supposed to be looking at about 1.6 to 2 million barrels of um, um, crude oil. Then now we have been promised, oh, uh, by December, we will reach about 2 million and uh, we'll start uh, uh, exporting petroleum products. How will you be exporting petroleum products when you don't even have a single one to, to pump into this? And you see what the last thing they were saying, the, the regulator, were, oh, that Gamote is going to be uh, monopolistic in nature. I agree. If your own refinery is working, with Dangote be, uh, we'll be telling that, talking about monopoly. Then you're going to compete with Dangote. If Dangote has one, and the federal government, NFPC, whatever it is, have three major refineries working in Wari, working in Port Harcourt, and working in Canada, then there's going to be stiff competition. But if some people are, are, are ready to not to make this work, just back to your question, I don't see whatever money that's going to, whatever money you're talking about, that money will be shared by some people and nothing will happen. Hmm. That is how we roll. <laughs> That's, That's how we roll. It's <laughs> quite unfortunate. And, you know, it just brings me back to the Guardian newspaper. There's, there's this story, in the, not even a story, there's this advertorial as it is, where um, government, the former polo, the security person in charge of five lines, uh, is congratulating or thanking the president for nominating or appointing one of their own daughters. You know, it has been happening where a particular ethnic group or a particular geopolitical zone will be thanking the president for appointing someone from their locality. Like How did they get here? Where someone who has been appointed may be on merit. It uh, should be on merit. It should be on merit. And then someone is saying, oh, thank you so much for recognizing our people. Uh, shouldn't that just be a normal thing that you do? Someone is qualified, you give him that appointment. Exactly. And then a community has to come out. And if they don't come out, maybe next time they wouldn't have an appointment. Mm. How did we get here, Chris? How has nepotism eaten so deeply into oh. our nation? It, uh, that is what is called patronage. Now, I service. That is what they are doing. Most of them, all those things, all those that part, you think that it's just for them. But especially with um, Polo, he has been so consistently with this. Any small thing, you will take the front pages of all the newspapers and uh, ask yourself, that is why he's telling that these people are he's making so much money. It's a fact now. You know how billions and billions of um, dollars that is being paid. Just as I said earlier on, he's the one that has been asked to uh, to man the, the pipelines, uh, the pipelines yeah. and make sure that this thing. on a daily basis we have been hearing stories and how this is that ships comes into uh, our territories and siphon each of them, some of them can as much as three million um, liters of um, of um, crude oil, mm. three million. I didn't say three hundred thousand. I didn't say thirty thousand. Three million. And for you to load a three million ton, a three million um, um, ship, it could take you a whole one month. And you're telling me that when they are moving that, this is from the creeks, pretty creeks, to that because the ship will be on the high seas. It doesn't get close to the um, uh, to the harbor here because it's a very big ship. So they have smaller um, uh, vessels that transport those things and continue loading until it's filled. What are these Trantina and Tantina or whatever Trantina or whatever they call them? What have they been doing? What has the Nigerian Navy been doing? What has the NCDC been doing? You will be shocked that our security agencies, most of them connive with this um, And that is why, do you know that most of the security agencies bribe their way to be posted to the Niger Delta? Are you aware? Mm -hmm. Mm. Yes, now, most of them bribe their way to be posted because they know how lucrative it's going to be when they get there. So, until we are ready to have, we do the need um, last week, I was just laughing when last week the, um, uh, was it? the CDS came out uh, with all the security chiefs, the Inspector General of Police, the Chief of Naval Staff, the Chief of Army Staff, the Chief of Air Staff, the one of NDC, the NCTC, um, um, other related. Oh, the government and president are giving them a match matter. Uh, we are going to stop this, we are going to stop that. Because the IGP has come out to set up a tactical uh, unit or whatever, either by the Deputy Commissioner of Police. Um, on oil and that is under money for the security agencies. They will not do anything because all of them are beneficiary. And you have this will. Look at what is it. it that we just don't took some um, uh, media executives or journalists around his um, um, facilities. If you still, if you look at the control room, it is like what we saw in uh, Dubai. Is it Dubai or one of those uh, uh, Arab countries or Saudi Arabia? Where you just say within your control. And you'll be seeing how all the oil uh, pipelines have been moved, the, the number of liters of petroleum that is being moved, or whatever. That is how they, everything has gone just beyond marginal uh, putting boot on the ground. 
if we use technology, most of these so-called LSD cannot be stolen. But they know what they are doing. They know that once that is done, they will, go, they will not be able to get the right. But as I repeat, that is how we roll. You know, it's an illusion with that. All right. Um, so let's talk about the planned protest. So on The Guardian, it says, planned protest, NLC, NANS, others insist governments must address hardship, well, hunger and hardship on the punch. It also says, hunger protest, NLC wants against clamp down now the commission of police in the fct area has even warned residents not to protest saying it's going to um, trample on security in that area so you're seeing even government officials coming out to almost threaten you by saying do not protest so how, how can we even express our feelings because as we know the office of the citizen should be like the highest office in the land so how can we address how we feel or address our challenges um, and they listen to us if they're saying we shouldn't protest. I know now that NLC is already, you know, warning against the clampdown from obviously um, security agencies. But what best way can we make the government listen to us? First and foremost, nobody can stop anybody from protesting Nigeria. Mm. That's a fact. Nobody. Uh, the protest is a fundamental human right, and it has been enshrined in the Constitution of the Federal Republic. The 1999 Constitution as amended, and that um, issue has been uh, has been adjudicated um, uh, at, at, the, at the Supreme Court, up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court has said that no Nigerian can be stopped from protesting. So all this um, uh, hot air blowing and the rest of them, the police cannot stop any protest. The, what only what we can only happen is that if the protest becomes violent, then people will be arrested for being violent. That we protest. That you're going to, what if the court has gone ahead to say is that the police should provide security around those who have been going about the peaceful protest. And let us even get this right. Most of them say, oh, the, oh, the SRC, they don't want a, a, a repeat of NSAR. Uh, what happened? I don't know. There was no, there was no problem with NSARS. Those that organized NSARS were very peaceful. They were educated young Nigerians who knew what they were doing, who amassed themselves around the lake to get and for days they were dancing they were beating drums and they were making their points known as has only became violent when government now deploys soldiers to start shooting at protesters that is when the hoodlums took advantage of the situation and be able to be able to cause mayhem and i hope that the government has learned this lesson because if people are protesting and the police provide their security they don't feel like be hiding anybody so any people say that nobody, I am personally, I am not for the protest because I believe that there are far more better ways of being able to handle our situations. But if some people have decided on their own to go on protest, then it is their fundamental one. We saw what happened in, um, um, in, in Kenya. Instead of the government addressing the issue as it were now, trying to find out who are the leaders of those who try to make this point and sit down at the table with them to be able to argue on that. That was the same thing, the mistake Rutos did in Kenya. Instead of addressing the issues raised by the youth who were protesting over the tax that were ready to protest over the so-called tax law that was being put in place by the National Assembly, it was calling them all sorts of names, taking that by using the police and pushing out the police on the street by, by shooting and being able to raise the result. At the end of it, all, it boomerang. He swallowed his speech. He swallowed his words. At the end of it, all, um, the Kenyans of Kenyans uh, lost their lives. All the entire cabinet of photos were sacked. The Inspector General of Police, the equivalent in Kenya, was also sacked. Now he's trying to recoup. Even the youth are still saying, look, even you have done this, it's you, gone, gone, you, you, now you, more, you, now you, go, go. You know that kind of thing. So I hope that our, our government have done it. That instead of being that, what are the spokesperson of the government saying? Oh, it is P2B. It is P2B that is organizing. It is the supporters. They are looking, leaving the problem as it were, and just chasing these shadows. Ask me how P2B is involved with it. Has we since P2B come out to say a single one? Oh, it's P2B. It's part to tell me. Is this? They are looking at ways of just dividing it. Let them know that Nigerians are very hungry. And a hungry man is an angry man. That is the way you can push a man to the world. He has to react. Even ordinary goods. That is the way you push a good. Push, push, you can see that you go. If they can't go market, you go just raise the head. That is a good. Talk for human beings. 
Well, well our, our, our deputy senate president has said we are a giant in Africa, mm -hmm. so we should not be carrying placards like uh, small countries like Kenya. That was the advice he gave to the U.S. They don't carry the U.S. and the U.K. Is Nigeria more giant than the U.K. and Abeg? Okay, okay, calm down, Chris, calm, calm down. Well, um, the bold headline on both the Daily Trust and the Nation yeah, sure. newspaper is a death sentence that's what it is when i saw it i was like okay someone is trying to talk about to talk against death sentence then i looked at it when someone was saying that uh, diabetes took my eye and insulin prices could take my life that's the reality of what we find in the health sector right now yesterday someone was trying to get um, prices for medication, maybe uh, uh, malaria, typhoid, and the rest of those ones. And then I asked the pharmacist for uh, the prices so that I can send to him. And what they told me was really alarming. Now, if you know the prices of things like uh, Augmentin before now, you would know uh, what the difference is. That medication is up to 17 thousand in fact, in fact 18, okay yes 18, okay and the person i sent it to was telling me that where he was talking from it is twenty five thousand for that medication augmentin and then quartem that used to be like 550 naira and then it About got 5, to 000, 1, 000. yes quartem right now from that pharmacist that i got the the price list is thirteen thousand uh five hundred as we speak right. right now mm -hmm. So astimine, which is a blood tonic and all mm -hmm. that, is now 5,000 from uh, 1,200 naira. So I do not understand where we are going to. So if you're ill right now, there's a possibility you might die, not because the illness is so serious, but because you cannot even afford the, the basic medication. medication. Paracetamol is 500 naira a card in most places. So, where so you cannot we... even afford to have a headache. Yes, yeah, so you can't even have a headache. That's the, that's the thing. The luxury of having a headache is no longer there. Chris, what are we doing? Well, um, it's a death sentence. That, 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 uh, what is called that advertorial is from the, I think, from the Diabetic Society of Nigeria, or whatever. Yes, yeah. um, study it. Um, that woman is the vice president of that association. And what is saying that the cost of medicine, as it were, has gone up the roof, and that is reality. We are talking about food, which is very, very, uh, we've seen the prices of food items where, uh, where people now are dying more from diseases, curable and um, uh, preventable diseases that they cannot afford. Um, what you said is right, because I know that malaria drugs, you get no, no good malaria drugs for less than 5,000 naira now. As you say, price that means to be 100 naira there, but it has gone up. 50. And so, 50 50 naira what you are praying for, in Nigeria, what you are praying for in Nigeria, never to force it. Even we as the young ones, if we don't force it, wouldn't our parents force it, we are good. What of our relatives that are in the villages and the rest of them? If we, if we are a country of record that keep data, by the time that uh, the data of the number of deaths that is going on in Nigeria comes out, you'll be shocked by the number of them. Um, uh, and these are these are got things that government can should be able to handle. That is the essence of government. The essence of government is to be able to give the people the best of life, at least the basic. Um, in other countries, you don't even need to worry about this. Thing. Once you queue into the uh, insurance policy, health insurance policies, everything concerning you will be taken care. In fact, it gets to the point that uh, uh, periodically the insurance companies, those companies, uh, uh, government just will be calling you. You are supposed to come for a test. How, why haven't you come? Why people cannot do that is because they don't have the money. They don't. We, even this local one, the Agbo that we are taking, the leaves, you cannot see the leaves again. No? Because they have, people have cut down all the, uh, like the trees and using it to cook. So that is the where, that is, those are the ones. That is what I'm talking about. So it's not just, when it's just been unnecessary, and in fact, they look amazing. The members don't go get hypertension, come go for the last one, they're talking about Nigeria. Because it's becoming so dear. But the government is looking at the other way because. Look at it. All the manufacturing um, 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 drug manufacturing companies in Nigeria have shut down. Yeah. Most of them have shut down. Practically all of them. Even the foreign ones, you saw all of them have left. Smith Lime, whatever, yeah. left them. All of them have closed down and moved. So what we is depend on are imported, most of them imported. Even those that are around to manufacture, how much are they getting the product, they're getting their uh, uh, what they use from manufacturing. So it is a critical situation. We are talking about food. We are talking about um, um, health, 
We are talking of security. We are talking of education. We are talking of power. We are talking of petroleum. It takes to live in Nigeria. You must be a superhuman. Hmm. Anybody in Nigeria now Not is all heroes wear capes. capes. Yeah. We are heroes yes. here in Nigeria. We are heroes. And you know that every one of us, let me put land on this. You know, every one of us is a local government chairman. Mm. What do I mean? The local government chairman means that you are providing it, you provide water for yourself, you provide mm. electricity for yourself, you provide security for yourself. Even that small room, you enter your city, small time, they come you say, come pay, say, one repair them. When there's no electricity, they say come and pay for transformer, despite the fact that you are paying for your uh, electricity tariff. Mm -hmm. So we are more like a government to ourselves. Then this shouldn't be. Those are the part of what is that. And I have said time and time that Nigeria is too rich to be poor. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is too rich to be poor. The problem we have is leadership who are not able to die. And the most annoying part of it, why they are trying us to tie their, our, their, our, our belt, they are losing their own fact, they are tying apart. I've seen it time and time on this, uh, this because they're not dying. When the president they are talking about the president that has about close to about nine uh, to ten presidential fleets, I've decided to buy a new one. When you're talking of a vice president, who knows that Nigeria has suffering, they've hmm. decided to build a new pass for him, costing billions and billions of naira. Well, then you show the level of this CCTV on the part of our uh, leaders. Yeah. It's quite unfortunate that this is our reality. And like you said, um, we're too rich to be poor. Imagine having a nation that is rich with so many resources, but then the poverty line deepens each and every single day. And people just cannot even barely, like they cannot afford the basic necessities. We just hope that um, a new dawn will come. And yes, the government will start to listen to us. And the welfare of the people will be something that is imperative for them um, when it comes to whatever they're thinking or even the policies and measures that they will put in place. Anyways, this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. Chris, Kende, we want to say thank you so much for coming. It's always a pleasure having a conversation with you on The Breakfast. Thank you. Thank you, my people. Have a wonderful day ahead. You too. Yes, sir. All right, so we're speaking with Chris Kengi Wando. He's a member of the Chartered Institution of Arbitrators in the UK and he was joining us from here in Lagos State. We've just been taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break now and when we return, we'll be looking at Dangote telling the NMPCL to buy him out. Please stay with us. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.